Black holes don't exist. What a twist! I've heard that notion many times, either from people who simply don't know where the idea of black holes comes from and about all the evidence we have today, or from conspiracy theorists who reject modern science and general relativity in particular. This image of a shadow of a black hole doesn't impress them. They would demand a super detailed photograph, although they wouldn't believe it was real anyway. And the third group of people would hear about really weird, almost fairy tale like properties of black hole and wouldn't believe something like that could actually exist. But no one is saying that black holes exist. I mean, nobody is saying that we know that 100%. We have theories that predict their existence, calculations, but also observational evidence. When we combine all that, it turns out that the concept of black holes currently is the best way to explain certain things that we see in actual data. I had a video where I talked about why we think black holes exist. But in short, in the universe we find massive but very compact objects, and it's believed today most likely some of them are black holes. But it's not the only explanation for those objects, and there are some alternatives. Black stars, dark matter stars, grava stars, Planck stars, fuzzballs, gray holes, boson stars, a lot of them. But none of them are mainstream, and some perhaps are just wrong. So in this video I'm going to talk about black hole alternatives. My name is Andre, and this is Cosmos Elementary. If we read the most overused description of black holes, an object with gravity so strong that even light can't escape it, the idea of such an object isn't even that surprising. The idea of such an object first appeared way before Einstein and Schwarzschild. John Mitchell came up with it in 1783. To go beyond the orbit around Earth, you need to achieve escape velocity, which is 11.18 km per second. And from Earth to an object that would fit the description of a black hole is only one step. We need to imagine an object that would have an escape velocity of the speed of light or more. John Mitchell called this hypothetical object a dark star, and it is similar to the description of a black hole. But since then we've learned a lot. Black holes first appeared in solutions of Einstein's equations. Later, some observational evidence for the existence of massive but compact objects came which we now think of as stellar and supermassive black holes, and currently there is a lot of data and theoretical knowledge. And of course, the image of a shadow of a black hole. But black holes still have big problems, one of which is black hole information paradox. Actually, I have a whole separate video about that, but in short... According to modern theories, information about the system can neither be created nor destroyed. But when something crosses the event horizon of a black hole and after a very long time the black hole evaporates via Hawking radiation, information seemingly gets destroyed, violating the principle of information conservation. And that's the paradox. But again, it's better to watch my separate video. I'll leave a link to it in the description. One of the basic parts of the concept of black holes is the event horizon, which nothing can escape. And if any material got inside the event horizon and stayed there, cut off from the rest of the universe forever, it would be fine. But the paradox appears when not only general relativity, but also quantum mechanics is applied to black holes. Then they stop being eternal and slowly decay due to Hawking radiation. But the physical information about the system, its complete description, must be conserved. You can look at a disassembled Lego car, but having information about the past movement of its every piece, you could reconstruct the whole picture and figure out what those now separate pieces used to be. Let's say there was a pile of ash. In theory, knowing what had previously happened to every single particle in that pile, we could tell what this ash used to be before all the chemical reactions. It would be really hard reconstructing the fate of every single atom, but in principle it could be done. But if something falls into a black hole and then, after a very long time, a black hole evaporates, it releases back into the universe only the particles like photons and neutrinos. And measuring those particles, we wouldn't be able to tell what the matter had been before it came the mass of the black hole. Information was destroyed and that's the problem. There is a lot more to it, but again, I have a separate video on this topic. The important thing is how those black hole alternatives also attempt to solve this paradox. Then a lot of scientists have a problem with singularities of infinite density, we don't know what is actually going on inside black holes and 
even if the event horizon actually forms. Whether black holes bend space-time exactly in the way we expect them to, so that's all complicated and really hard or straight up impossible to test. That's why scientists also ask a question, what if we are wrong? What if those compact objects we detect are actually not black holes, but something different? Let's begin with black stars. Where do alternative ideas come from? It all depends on what model we use. Mitchell's dark star came up in Newton mechanics. At that time nobody knew about the bending of space-time and all that. More modern view of a black hole came up in Schwarzschild's solutions of Einstein's equations. It was the most basic model of a known rotating black hole. Kerr's solutions had a rotating black hole, which is probably more realistic, but also more complex with singularities being not just a point. Again, when we apply quantum mechanics, black holes stop being eternal and evaporate over time. We still don't have the theory of everything, which would describe all four fundamental interactions and unite quantum mechanics and general relativity. But there are attempts to create that theory, and some of black hole alternatives come out of various models and theories like string theory or semi-classical gravity. Black stars come from the second of those two. A black hole is not just a large mass, it's a large mass in a tiny volume. For any mass, we could calculate what is called the Schwarzschild radius, which is usually referred to as the size of a black hole or a radius of the event horizon. In theory, any object could be squeezed hard enough to make a black hole out of it, but in practice it's almost impossible. To make a black hole out of our planet, we would need to somehow squeeze it down to the size of less than an inch in diameter. That's why black holes probably form in such cataclysmic events as the death and collapse of a massive star, or merging of neutron stars. The concept of a black star is described in this paper. When a massive enough star ends its life cycle on the main sequence during which it is stable and gravity and outward pressure are balanced out. But when hydrogen in the core starts running out, gravity wins over and the star starts collapsing. Actually, there could be different scenarios and processes, like whether a black hole forms directly or at first a neutron star forms and then a black hole, but that's not the point now. So authors of this paper suggest that we look at the process of the collapse through the lens of semi-classical gravity, which basically states that matter is governed by the laws of quantum mechanics, whereas gravity follows classical laws. This model can predict such an object as a black star. Not to go into too much detail, in this case, if the stellar collapse is slower and also quantum effects are accounted for, the repulsive force can appear and collapse is slowed down even further and it never actually happens, only infinitely slows down. The event horizon never forms, and no event horizon means no problems like information paradox. What would such an object look like? Even though the size of a black hole is usually associated with the radius of the event horizon, it is not the same as the radius of a planet or a star. The event horizon is not a physical surface, it is just a point in space-time at a certain distance from the center of a black hole. But black stars are thought to have a physical surface with material filling the whole volume enclosed in it. But it would still look a lot like a black hole. It is a massive and compact object, the gravitational field would be similar to that of a black hole, with all the lensing effects and stuff. Why is the star black? After all, it doesn't seem to have an event horizon. So here the story is a bit different. It should be black not because of gravity not letting the light escape. It would be able to escape, but because of still very strong gravity, it would be redshifted so much that it would basically become dark. Looks like a black hole, but not a black hole. No event horizon, no singularity, no information loss paradox. Cool? Cool. But there is always a bug. A lot of those, actually. It's definitely not the most popular alternative, and probably one of the least popular ones. Semi-classical gravity is one of the concerns, also it would be kinda hard to tell whether we see a black hole or a black star, so there are other options. In 2005 an article came out, it was called Black Holes Do Not Exist, though do not exist in quotation marks. The paper described the concept by theoretical physicist George Chaplin. The idea is quite extreme. It all starts with a regular collapse of a massive star, an event horizon forms, but then there is something different. As you may know, dark energy is... 
Well, we don't really know what it is, but we can see the effects of this mysterious form of energy in the universe. It's a mysterious form of energy which we explain accelerated expansion of the universe with. It could be the property of space-time itself. So according to Chaplin, during collapse, beyond the horizon, the phase transition of the space-time itself happens. Similar to how gas can become liquid and liquid can become solid, so in the extreme conditions of a collapsing star, something like that could happen to space-time itself. The region beyond the event horizon becomes filled with dark energy, so there is more dark energy than on average in the universe. So this dark energy acts against gravity and doesn't allow event horizon to form, so this object is not inescapable. And again, no event horizon, no singularity, no problems with the information, case closed, black holes do not exist. Again, it's not that simple, a lot of assumptions have to be made, and this idea is not really popular in the scientific community. Working on that hypothesis, Chaplin concluded that a spinning dark energy star could be not spherical, but rather have a shape of a donut. Another idea is Gravastar, short for Gravitational Vacuum Star. The concept is somewhat similar to a dark energy star. Again, it all starts with the collapse of a massive star, again the phase transition happens, and dark energy in a Gravastar stops further collapse. A collapsing object never reaches Schwarzschild radius, so an event horizon never forms. And here, instead, there is an actual physical surface made of Bose-Einstein condensate. A special state of matter when all of the particles act like a single quantum mechanical entity. So it's a weird object with a thin shell and dark energy inside. And again, such an object could look a lot like a black hole, but... Again, no event horizon, no singularity, no problems associated with them. The idea for Gravastar was used in an attempt to explain an unusual gravitational waves event GW190521, which seemed to be coming from a collision of two objects of 66 and 85 solar masses. The problem is that it is unlikely for stellar black holes of that mass to form naturally. But according to this paper, Gravastars of that mass could exist. But the paper also points out that in such an event it would be hard to distinguish black holes from Gravastars. Another interesting idea is a Planck star. Authors of the idea drew parallels between the evolution of the universe and the evolution of stars and black holes. By the way, there is a different hypothesis that black holes could contain universes. So the universe could end in many different ways, and the scenarios depend on properties of space-time. The most popular scenario nowadays is the heat death of the universe, but there are others, like the Big Rip, the Big Crunch and the Big Bounce. According to the last one, at a certain point the expansion of the universe stops. It starts contracting, but when reaching the point of immense density at Planck scale, it bounces back and starts expanding again, and then the whole cycle repeats again and again. So in this paper, scientists apply the similar logic to collapsing stars. Collapsing matter doesn't reach the state of singularity, but rather stops due to quantum effects. It reaches the Planck length, basically the minimum size at which laws of physics should still work. So on the outside it would look like a black hole, but on the inside there would be a core in the form of a Planck star. The object would be also slowly evaporating due to Hawking radiation, but at the same time the Planck star inside would grow, and eventually its surface would meet the event horizon, and the information could be released back to the universe. This way we again avoid singularity and solve the information paradox. Also because of the gravitational time dilation, depending on the observer, the time would run slower on the outside than on the inside. A Planck star could be a way to travel to a distant future, in a sense. If we somehow could land on the surface, manage not to get ripped apart by tidal forces, we would quickly travel forward in time, if we survived, which is unlikely. Now let's look at another alternative, and it becomes weirder and weirder. As I've said, different alternatives come up in different models and theories, so the next object is from the string theory. It's called a fuzzball. It's a ball of strings. We're not gonna focus on the string theory, but the basic idea is that in that theory all of the subatomic particles and carriers of forces are replaced with tiny one-dimensional strings. And what we perceive as different particles are actually various vibrations of those strings. 
It's one of the attempts to create the theory of everything. This alternative suggested by proponents of the string theory is a hypothetical object that reminds more of a neutron star than a black hole. Neutron stars are, of course, not only made of neutrons. There are other particles as well. But in the possible, because of extreme conditions, all particles transform into the most basic constituents, strings. So it's a very dense ball of tiny vibrating strings. The pros are, again, lack of a singularity and an event horizon. And the cons are, well, the string theory. It is still not the theory of everything. It's not proven in experiments, and the theory is far from being perfect and complete. Though, the idea of fuzzballs is interesting. There were suggestions that it could even be tested. Allegedly, the gravitational wave patterns of colliding fuzzballs would be different from black holes. But no known events were interpreted in this way. And that's not all. There are also Q-stars or grey holes. Those look more like neutron stars than black holes. Compact objects with matter in exotic state they would be more massive than neutron stars, but have a physical surface. Another alternative is weird boson stars that could be transparent. There were suggestions that supermassive black holes in some galaxies could actually be boson stars. But still, with all their problems, black holes remain the best explanation for massive compact objects. And that shouldn't be surprising after learning about the suggested alternatives. But still, the problem is our limited knowledge and capabilities. We can't completely rule out the possibility that one day some breakthrough could happen and the concept of black holes would become outdated. But so far it still holds up. But it is still good that scientists look for alternatives. Even if their ideas sometimes turn out to be wrong, in the end it helps us understand the universe even better. Thanks for watching. Links to all of the information sources are down below in the description. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment and subscribe. Bye.